millions of vulnerable Americans struggle to get reliable transportation to their medical appointments. That's why I started MedHall. Let me take it City launched the Impact Fund to invest in both women and entrepreneurs of color like me so I can realize my vision and give everything I've got to my company and my community. I got you. For the love of people, for the love of community, for the love of progress. City. Welcome to the Paley Fest Fall TV Previews. I'm Angelique Jackson, Senior Entertainment Writer for Variety, and I am delighted to be your host for this special conversation celebrating the new season of Love Life, which premieres on HBO Max on October 28th. Thanks to Paley Fest's official card and official sponsor, City, for helping make this event possible. Today, we are thrilled to welcome the members of this series, gifted cast and creative team. We are joined by executive producer and star, William Jackson Harper, who plays Marcus Watkins, Jessica Williams, who stars as Mia Hines, mm. Sam Boyd, creator, EP, and showrunner, Rochelle Williams, EP and showrunner, hey. Sergeant Bedard, EP and showrunner, mm. and executive producer, Paul Feig. Welcome, everybody. Thank you, Thank you so much for having Thank us. You. Family. We Thank love you for having us. Well, the audience, of course, is so excited to get a new iteration of Love Life Season 2. So, Sam, as our creator, I'm going to start with you. You know, we started with Darby's story, played by the wonderful Anna Kendrick, and now we are pivoting to Mr. William Jackson Harper. What was it about Marcus and, and this story that made you guys want to go in this direction? So, yeah, no, th thank you. Uh, from, from the beginning, I think the idea for the show was that we would reset every season, and I kind of always saw the show as an opportunity if we were lucky enough to make more than one season to be able to essentially build a new character study every time we did it and i think especially being able to with the second season kind of build it around an actor um will was just someone that we had been huge fans of and were so excited about the idea of working with it was it was just you know kind of beyond belief um and so to be honest it started with will it started with us going you know, oh my God, we have this opportunity, this kind of blank slate and, you know, let's let's build this character together and let's figure this story out together. Um, and kind of, you know, just all of us in this kind of big collaboration, figuring, figuring that out. Well then, to Will, to you, you know, what was it about Marcus and really about love life in general that made you want to be a part of a series like this? Well, I think that like, uh... You know, first off, watching the first season, I I just felt it was like a really honest depiction of what it is to be a person in New York and navigating that. You know, I think a large part of that is, you know, finding the person you want to be with um, or if you want to be with the person, you know, and sort of like uh, just sort of navigating that in the context of just growing up where you're making all these sort of very early adult kind of rookie mistakes. And there's something about that first season which felt very familiar to me, um, you know, right down to the apartment that felt very small, but there was a whole lot of people there all the time that, you know, it was like things like that, which just felt like, oh yeah, this is what, this is what young adulthood feels like. And and so with that being so keenly observed, I felt like I, I just felt like it would be I, I would be foolish to not take the opportunity to work with a team that put something like that together to, you know, sort of explore a different hunk of life, uh, you know, in New York as well. Well, Monty, tell us. Oh, no, go ahead, Sam. Go ahead. No, never mind. It was a horrible joke. That was very. <laughs> <laughs> ah, now you got to tell it. He yeah, said hunk, of, for the he show, said, hunk of life. He said <laughs> hunk of life, and I said hunk indeed. That was what I said. <laughs> I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. Marcus is a hunk indeed, and I think that that's a very important part of this show. What was it like getting a chance to, you know, explore this young black man in New York City living um, as the show progresses, uh, the single life? How'd you adjust? Um, well, I mean, look, I, I, I haven't been single in a long time because I'm bad at it. It's not fun for me. <laughs> I, I find it really stressful. I feel like a jerk all the time. I feel like I'm always breaking up and making mistakes. And so, um, you know, it, it's it, for me, there's like a lot that 
that, that I, I couldn't really like pull on like a ton of personal experiences to be like, oh, well, yeah, well, when I was 36 and I was in too deep with somebody, you know, like I didn't have that. But mm -hmm. like, um, I, I think the thing that is, uh, that's really fun about it is being able to sort of come at this um, as a slightly older man, having made some of these mistakes or something sort of adjacent to them and sort of unpacking them in a way with a little bit of a, a distance from it. Um, and there's also so many things that the writers just like their personal experiences and the things that they just kind of came up with that, um, you know, like as we would discuss some of the stories, um, you know, like what are the ways in which like specifically I would deal with them uh, rather than leaning too much into the idea of dude in New York in sort of a romantic setting, blah, blah, blah. It's like, just like, well, what is the, what is the real thing? What's the thing that's a little bit messy and kind of complicated and, uh, you know, won't necessarily just land us in a, a place that we've always seen. So, um, yeah, it, it, that's, that's the fun part of it. It's not really about the, the, the hunky New York theater or theater 30 something dude. It's really just sort of diving into the nuances of just being a dude. Mm -hmm. You just started really describing yourself more. You, you slipped into that theater dude. You were like, I mean, he is me. I am a <laughs> theater dude. I've never before said. I love it. <laughs> well, you know, Bridget, Sam, Rochelle, you know, this series is known for, you know, pulling those real life stories from the writer's room, like Will just said. Rochelle, I guess I'll start with you because you're the newbie to this group joining as co-showrunner. What was it about Love Life and about Marcus's story in particular that made you want to sign on and also kind of share with the group um, some of your experiences? Well, what I liked most, I mean, first when I met with Bridget and Sam, I was all in for season two of White Girls Next Door. I'm like, hey, I, I can do that too. Like, you know, then it's like, oh, yeah, we're gonna go a different way. It's like, okay, that's that's tight. But like, um, no, seriously. You no, know, what I what I thought was really cool with um with Will's character of being able to really establish a really truly different season because of the way people move differently in the world. And like Darby is, you know, a white girl. She kind of, you know, she has these really purely like love experiences and she's in this environment. She has a career, yeah. she's a woman. But then when you have uh, Marcus's character, there's also just a different type of pressure for him. And so to bring a character into a completely different situation, okay, like he is married, he's going to get divorced. How does he regroup? And then also like the factors, the things around him that make it different from Darby of like how he has to move through the world, the, his space at work, his friends, like all the kind of compartmentalizing he has to do to just survive. And then ultimately getting to meet that person where he doesn't have to do any of that anymore. And like, and that was the really, the journey I was really, really interested in telling. And like, it's a crazy way that he gets there, but like ultimately like that's how that goes, but just like exploring a, a black man in, in white spaces in the city and urban, you know, like and just kind of like trying to hone in on what that on what that's like. Well, Jessica, we don't know if Mia is the person, but we know that she is no. an important person in Marcus's life and she has her own layers that we get to peel back herself. So tell me a little bit about what made Mia so interesting to you. Oh man, I I was really excited like to jump on the project and after seeing the first season, I thought it was amazing. And then something, you know, known as the will effect, which is like, will it's the WJH effect. And I was really excited to just kind of be able to work with him. And uh, it, I don't know, I, I, that was kind of the basis for it. And then I, I met with Sam and Sam was explaining Mia to me and uh, she just was really, interesting and complicated. And I felt like it would be really cool to see a character uh, through time, the way that, you know, is built into the format of the show. And I was, I was really excited at what I felt like was the kind of collaboration and agency that I was able to have as an actor. Um, I felt like, you know, especially in meeting with, with Sam and Rochelle that, you know, they trusted me to bring this character to life and they wanted to work with me uh, to play Mia. And I, I just had so much fun. And I know like when we finished the season, I wasn't expecting this, but 
it was just like, I missed, it felt like ending a, a book, like a really nice book that I read and I, I miss her a lot. And I don't know, I just felt, I was excited to be a black woman in this sort of format and to kind of be able to just bring her to life and have the freedom to do so, which you don't get on, on every show and on every set. So it was just a really great experience. Well, Sam, Bridget, you know, tell me a little bit about the chemistry between Will and Jessica and that feeling of having to kind of make lightning strike twice um, with, you know, you found these great pairings last go around. How, how, do you, how do you see that chemistry again when you're, you know, watching the dailies and seeing how they're uh, getting on on camera? Um, well, I will say, I, just to kind of preface my answer, this show has been the show that has most been born minute by minute that I've ever worked on just like day by day by day we're figuring out who these characters are and they're just getting deeper and more complex and it was never it was never like oh here's exactly where we see this show this season going this is exactly what's going to happen we literally it was like the longest writer's room I've ever been in or run it was it went on for like almost a year we just like really really went deep and um part of that that was all and a part of um, the discovery was the natural chemistry the two of them had together so that we were actually like so that we were able to just do whole runs of story where they just walk and talk which you know you can't you can't count on if that chemistry is not there and so so you know even if in the beginning we're like maybe they'll stay together maybe they won't you know it, it just became like an evolving process as as their chemistry became so clear to us um so i i don't know i don't really want to give anything away um but uh, I, I felt like we were just so lucky. So thank you guys for that. Um, oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, no, seriously. I mean, I think that was the thing, you know, I already talked obviously a little bit about us, um, you know, thinking about Will in the first place, but then as we built the thing and, and, and really started getting it on its feet, um, the idea of Jessica playing Mia was just like such a fucking dream. And I don't know if I'm allowed to curse, but I just did. I won't again. Um, <laughs> Such a such a dream, and and I think you know the thing to talk about the chemistry. Like it's just the thing you always hope for, which is like such huge fans of each of them. They're both such incredible actors, and then you watch them together, and it's like explosive. You know, like it's literally it's such a kind of two plus two equals five thing. Um, and and so as Bridget said, and and as I'm sure you know, Rochelle can can attest to as well. Like we leaned into that, and we just kind of wrote and wrote and. And, you know, it was just really exciting and fun for us all to be kind of figuring that out together, building it together. Um, and, 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 you know, and I think also the show being a romantic comedy, um, at least superficially, and, and, you know, their chemistry really reminding me of just like all the great, you know, best all time romantic comedy chemistry and what happens when you get that, when you're lucky enough to find two actors that, that fit together like that is you're just like, oh, I just, you know, as Bridget said, like, I just want to watch them walk around. And like, that's enough. And I don't want anything bad to happen to them. And I just want to hang out with them. And the other thing I just want to add is like, dramatically, I realize how many punches the relationship can take when there's that chemistry, like dramatically in the writing, it can take so many more punches than, you know, if they didn't have that kind of glue. So yeah. it's fun for us to be able to just like, twist it and twist it, um, so. And I'll, and I'll add to like, we didn't have to dream up conflict or fake conflict. It's not like he owns the big bookstore and she, you know, like, you know, so they have that rom-com chemistry, but it's just like the conflict comes from two people in this space and, you know, their, their baggage and their trauma, you know? So like, there's still funny situations, but they're just fully like humans, you know? And um, so when you mix like that kind of vibe with also like just, rom-com energy like they have so like my favorite scene is just like when they go to well we've all seen the first episode at least like when they go to the met or to the moma right um, yeah. yeah and it's just like oh mm. holy shit like wow. it's it's insane you know and it's like um and then letting it unfold everything unfold naturally because it's just natural stuff that's going to happen with people that are that are into each other and i just love watching that naturally progress and not have to manufacture that kind of stuff yeah, it was really, it was really, sorry, it was really just nice as an actor to have just, you know, sort of things be really well written. So, cause it felt like we were, 
just like to, I, I know for me, it just felt like I was like a whole human and this character and we were just like just these whole characters being side by side, which was really cool. And I think you sort of miss that in, in this genre um, that this show kind of goes in and out of. And so that was, that was really refreshing. Well, Paul, I wanted to pitch it to you as well to weigh in on that concept, that idea of, you know, it snap, crackled and popped in season one. Um, but, you know, having to find that again in season two and, and what you saw when you got a chance to see Will and Jess, Jessica on screen. Oh, I mean, what a dream come true. I mean, I'm such a big fan of, of Will's and Jessica we've been trying to work with forever. So so it just really worked out so great. And when, when you know, Sam and Bridget and Rochelle told me that that's who the cast was going to be, I was just so excited about it. You know, and it's a really, it's just a th strength of the show. It's great writing performed by great, great actors. And, you know, you just, as a producer, I just get out of the way and let them do their thing. I mean, because it's just, you know, they are... You know, season one went so well and we were so happy with it. But, you know, when Sam had first pitched the show to us way back in the very beginning, it was always about each season, like he said, is going to be about a different character and in kind of how they tie together. But it's, it's like more of a handoff, as you'll see in some stuff you're going to see soon. But um, I think that's what makes it fun that, that, you know, I've never been a fan of anthology shows because I always feel like they're so separate. But this is so nice because it's how it brings these together and yet allows you to have these new stories, like a great novel where you're reading a chapter and you're like, oh, I love this character and they switch to another. It's like, oh, do I want to go with this? And then suddenly you're like, oh, I love that character and then they mix them up. So it's just, you know, I, I can't speak highly enough about this team in front of a beh and behind the camera. Listen, Paul, I appreciate you teeing that up as well, that this this season does tie into season one. We get a chance to kind of see a little bit of those characters, but the focus is definitely on Marcus's story. So let's talk a little bit more about fleshing out Marcus's world. You know, Will, you've got characters like, you know, Marcus's sister Ida, played by Punky Johnson, and his best friend Yogi. Tell me how they play into, you know, building, you know, and helping us learn more about how who Marcus is. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because like they are in a lot of ways, the, the thing that really stood out to me was that Marcus, because of this relationship having dissolved, you know, sort of being thrown back into the world, it's like, he's trying to figure out who he is, you know, like there's this idea. I feel like a lot of, you know, at least for me, like sometimes I, I determine who I am by the relationship that I'm in to some degree, you know, there's a part of that which informs that. And so when, when that all kind of gets thrown up in the air, especially at an age where you feel like you're supposed to know exactly who you are, and then all of a sudden you kind of don't, um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's really, it's kind of shattering. And I think that having, you know, characters like Yogi and Ida there who are in a very, you know, they're in a different place. They've sort of done a different kind of work on themselves that Marcus needs to sort of take some 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 cues from. Um, and I think that's one of the things, it's also one of the things I feel that uh, draws Marcus to Mia is, you know, like Mia is, you know, as far as Marcus can see, I knew that was gonna happen. Let me just tag team here. Um, this is uh, Will's dog Chico uh, oh. that that I would assume likes to bark. Happens every time. To uh -huh. me family. My dog is literally like right here, just uh -huh. like waiting. He's ready to bark. All right, sorry. Oh, yeah. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> we vamped. We vamped for you. We vamped. Flowers, yeah. right here. Flowers, flowers yeah. from upstairs neighbor and the guy was not getting my neighbor and he was like, well, <laughs> <laughs> and, and That's so, perfect. You got me. Um, Do you like your upstairs neighbor? Are you actually going to give them the flowers? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I left it right there. I mean, it's just two of us in this building. That's why he was like, well, I'm getting somebody today. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's, yeah, it's, it's just two of us. I, I, I love my neighbor. Um, but uh yeah uh, what was talk I about me you were like about... yeah you were like oh the uh like ida they've done the work of different like but this is what kind of draws him marcus to mia yeah is that there is uh from marcus's point of view there's this 
there's this solidness to who she is and how she moves through the world that is really appealing. Um, you know, I mean, that's not the only thing. I mean, you know, it's like there's obviously a lot of other things that, that draw Marcus to me, but I think that that's that's part of it. And um, and so it's like, you know, like I, I feel like the 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 thing about those those characters that is that's really intriguing to me is that there is a there's a there's a constant sunning of Marcus that kind of happens in a lot of ways. <laughs> Um, because he kind of needs to be sunned. He kind of needs to, there's a lot that needs to, that he needs to learn. He needs to figure out because so much has been tied into the relationships, the job, the idea of who he's supposed to be. And then he's surrounded by people that are who they are. And he's still trying to figure that out. Um, which is a weird sort of place to be when you're 30 something and you feel like you should have already done that, you know? Well, what is it like having Keith David kind of, you know, he's not, it's not all your innermost thoughts as Marcus, but some of them so what is it like having him narrate uh, a version of your life on screen <laughs> you know it's like i wish that i wish that my thoughts sounded like that to me <laughs> you know like my thoughts have a much higher voice and they stutter a lot more you know it's like, it's, it's like that's what my thoughts do they sputter and stammer and uh and they're not smooth at all um yeah, no, but it's it's great. I think David is like one of those actors that every time he shows up in anything, doing anything, he surprises me, and um, I I just I just I find it it's like I don't know, like equal parts like amazing and infuriating that he has so many gifts at the same time. Like you don't get to be that funny, that adept at you know, pathos and also have a voice like that. It's like, you get one, man. Like you don't get all of them. Um, so it's, 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 it's amazing. It's really cool. It makes me feel a lot cooler, you know, like, uh, <laughs> you know, like even if it's only like for the run of this show, like I get to feel like, well, you know, my thoughts are, are, are voiced by Keith David. That's what I sound like in the world. When you see me on the street, I want you to think that Keith David is narrating, you know, my entire existence. Um, at least I get that for a second. <laughs> We're making an app uh, that, that can be the <laughs> their life. Yeah. It'll give you the confidence idea. to be a theater yeah. hunk. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> theater play. Yeah. Jessica, this question comes from City, our festival sponsor. You know, this show depicts the quest of finding and trying to maintain love in a more realistic and authentic way compared to a lot of other series. So were there certain moments or scenes that you found that you could relate to in your personal life when you were thinking about navigating, uh, you know, your younger years? Definitely. I what I what I love about Mia is that she is really complex and I think she wants, you know, kind of what everybody else wants, which is to, you know, have, have fall in love and be loved and be seen and feel like she's seen by her partner. And I feel like what I related to was this sort of active cycle she has of, you know, the ways that we get in our own way for having intimacy with someone else. And I think, you know, she got, she gets in her own way as far as what she feels like she needs and what she deserves from uh, her partners and her partner. And I really like related to that struggle with vulnerability and you know, asking for what we need and not being afraid to go for it and feeling like, you know, oh, I deserve this. I deserve someone that's going to, uh, you know, see me for, for who I am. And so I felt like I got a chance to like explore those moments with her throughout this season and like also be simultaneously rooting for her to, you know, kind of figure out exactly what it is that she needs in her life to feel fulfilled both like work-wise, personal friendships and romantically. What about you, Bridget? I remember, you know, we were talking last season about, you know, you were on the subway with the baby in the stroller. So I know you're related to Darby, but what about this time? Yeah, I mean, for obvious reasons, I, I'm probably more in the Darby season than in this season, but I, I, uh, I still went through my thirties brutally and, mm -hmm. uh, and my 40s brutally. So for me, it's just, it's the experience that even when you find it, there's just one more problem. There's always just one more problem. There's one more twist, more issue. Um, and as I get older, I continue to feel that way and be surprised that there's still work to be done. And so I think that um, 
for this season, I, we really lean into that, especially as we get to the season that it's the journey's never over, the work's never done, the challenges persist, uh, but also that the joy is still there and hopefully it gets a little bit easier, a little bit lighter um, when you find your person. And that's, I, you know, I really believe that. And maybe that sounds very cynical, but I, I really, I really think it's just about the journey. And so that's what I think is reflected this season again, as, as it was with season one. All right, before we move on to the next topic, who else um, really related to what's going on this season? Who else wants to share their deeply personal stories, uh, not just on the screen, but you know, on the Zoom? Oh, well, I mean, well, well, speaking to Mia, um, I do think there's a, a bit of me in, the, in, the, in this character that I tried to, in, in terms of like trust and trust issues mm -hmm. and, um, just the skepticism that, you know, that you can have towards love or just like, here's my instinct, but like, no, it can't be right. Or, you know, I'm too busy, you know, like I can't have it. Like, I think in general, a lot of women and black women in particular made to feel like, oh no, well, I can't have it all. So like, I can't be this boss here and do that, you know, and just like, but ultimately like, you can, you know, if you really, really want it, you know, um, and I wanted to see, you know, I wanted to see some people try to get it all, you know, and see, you know, but like, what are the ups and downs of that? And, um, but it, it's one of those things you have to kind of see, have, 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 have lived that and realize that what you're like having it all actually looks like. Um, but yeah, so like there's, you know, in terms of especially like the humor and banter between Marcus and Mia, like I wanted to, def I wanted her to kind of like, uh, Will just said like, he need to be sung. Like I wanted to see like a woman kind of like, you know, not put him in his place, but like, you know, help open his eyes to some things that, you know, kind of like, I don't want to focus on that. But it's like, um, as you see in the first episode, just like, why, why would she say some shit like that? And it's kind of like, we're just like turning this switch <laughs> because, I, um, and like, and that's the, you know, the heightened version of it. like. I would never say some shit like that to someone in real life, but you know, but like it's some of the some of the things that are subtext that come up and so you know the things like that. I just thought it was like cool to see what would happen if you get two black people in the space and they're just more candid than we're used to to seeing, you know, on TV, you know, and there's no gimmick behind it, you know, they're just people. So um, so that's what I tried to put into Mia, but not making her truly as as dark and messed up as I am. <laughs> Still keeping it a rom com, and I, I think we succeeded. Definitely. Yeah. Paul or Sam, what about you? Was there a moment or a scene that you really related to this season? Of course, without giving any spoilers away. I, I love all the the, the parent stuff it, for, on both sides. You know, it, it's really it's such a great exploration, and it's so interesting to see the the relationships that they both have with with their parents and how it formed them. And th those scenes really really spoke to me and really moved me. And and, and there's some really lovely uh, um, navigation of that that you don't expect. So again, not, not giving anything away, but I just thought that was really masterfully done. And y'all, uh, you guys also nab some incredible talent for the parents as well. I mean. Listen, I, I, I'm, I, I won't give anything away because in case people don't know who the parents are, but man, they're, they're in for some excitement with that. <laughs> Same yeah. And just on the, a casting note, like, got to give so much credit to Sam and Bridget for making an incredible season one, because that's what made everyone want to jump on board. Like we, we, like, we swung for the fences Thank and they're you. just like, oh, I love, like, just to hear, like, I love season one. Yeah, I'm interested. I love this, this script. So it's like... <laughs> If they they planted you know the seeds to have awesome people come to season two you know so that was just an embarrassment of riches thanks okay. Rochelle I personally think it was the WJH effect so to speak yeah I'll, also <laughs> that <laughs> major is there a way to bottle this is it sold next to theater hunk <laughs> I think it has good flow I mean we're getting some really good merch ideas on this yeah I know that. <laughs> and can I get to, I want to give one final shout out to uh, co-EP extraordinaire Dan Magnante. Who, yes, uh, yes. yes. Unbelievable. So uh, thanks, Dan. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Well, <laughs> of course, we have uh, one other very important character on Love Life, and that is New York. Uh, this is a real, true New York story. You know, tell me about some of the iconic locations that we're going to get a chance to see this season. You know, how, how did y'all get around filming on location this year? We got some good ones. 
All right, Sam, go for it. Um, <laughs> well, Rochelle, Rochelle already mentioned that in the first episode we shot it at, at the MoMA, which was insane. Um, I don't know, Will and Jess, what were some of your favorites? Like we were just everywhere. Oh, from definitely the Googs, um, yeah, which was out, sort of a last minute AK, the, the Googs Goog time. Yeah. Uh, I we definitely filmed by where Will and I like lived, which was cool, and like different locations in Brooklyn, which was really fun. Um, I mean, it, it is it was it's a very cozy show uh, as far as as far as I'm I'm concerned. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's like uh, I was gonna say. I was like, I wasn't sure. I was like, can we say Guggenheim? Because it's like it where it happens. But yeah. That was dope. <laughs> right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was dope. And there's other stuff. I don't want to give them all up. I know. I yeah. yeah. You got to you got to hold some of them back. You can't you can't tell us everything. Yeah, Even I will say there there may or may not be a a, a romantic walk and talk in a like in an iconic big park uh centrally <laughs> located. Some yeah. would say in Manhattan. <laughs> You my, uh, yeah. my favorite location was um, when they were right outside of my Airbnb and I rolled out of bed and was just <laughs> and I was like, sweet. I love it. Yeah. We picked that specifically for you, Rochelle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, I mean, I love this show. I love how iconic the romances are. Um, and this is season two, but it feels like it's just the beginning. You know, Love Life does feel different from other romantic comedies. Where do you see this going beyond this season? You know, where where else do you want to take it? Um, I know we, we discussed, you know, potentially maybe an LGBTQ focused storyline in the future. What are you thinking, Sam, Bridget, Paul, Rochelle? Yeah. Who Sky's There's away. billions of people in this world and they all have love stories, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, you know, look, like I sometimes joke about it that I want it to be like the first romantic procedural ever that you could just do it forever and ever and ever. <laughs> because, you know, as Paul was saying, there's, you know, there's fucking seven, I did it again. There's seven billion people in the world, you know, or however many there are. And that's, to me, what's so exciting about it is every every new story that's told and every new character that's explored makes just the whole thing mean more to me, yeah. you know? And it's just like, the more we can explore a new character just as kind of like finely or, or with as much, you know, attempts at like sophistication and sensitivity and understanding, um, you know, it just, it's just, that, that's what it's all always been about to me. So I think I would love to explore, you know, as many, different characters and as many walks of life and people from as many different backgrounds and with as many different experiences as as possible and and you know yeah yeah i'm, I'm friends with nancy myers and she always says nobody is not interested in how somebody else fell in love and i feel right. that way too like we those are the stories you lean in you want to hear at dinner you want to hear with friends and so this just gets to explore it in such a you know a detailed way so I, now I want this to be like if Nancy Myers made Law and Order. That's for me. <laughs> I think that's perfect. I, 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 well, clearly I would watch that because I do. Um, <laughs> last, we're gonna wrap this up. Jessica, Will, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you guys close us out. You know, what is the one thing that you want people to know about this season of Love Life? What is, what is the thing about it that means the most to you? Jessica, I'll start with you, and and we'll wrap us up. Yeah, I, I think I would just love for people to know that it was really fun to make and I had a lot of fun doing it and I'm really proud of it and I, I can't wait for people to see it. It was a, it was a joy to make. Uh, and that, that's, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually just want to take the time to brag on Jessica for a second because one of the things that's like so incredible about her as a performer is this way of being completely relaxed and completely surprising at the same time. And it's one of those, it, it, it's, it, it's like, it's like one of those things that you chase as an actor. And so like watching, watching Jess, like in scenes, sometimes I catch myself just being like, damn, that was a whole bunch of good choices in a row. Oh, it's my turn, it's my turn. <laughs> um, and so like, I, I think that it's like, um, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited for, for everyone to see the show. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I, I, I love it. I had a great time doing it, but I, I think a large, large part of that was just getting to 
go toe to toe with Jess and learn mm -hmm. so much. So, oh, thank you. You know, yeah, like that's that's the thing that I'm excited about. You guys are spectacular on the show. Absolutely, Absolutely. spectacular. Absolutely. Thank you. I've got to say, it's just an incredible team assembled behind this series, both in front of and behind the camera. I think that's what people love so much about Love Life. So thank you all for joining us and, and diving a little bit into your series, which will be debuting on October 28th on HBO Max. And thank you so for much now. to the audience um, for joining us for this Paley Fest Fall TV preview conversation. Uh, thanks also to Paley Fest official card and official sponsor, City. And you can learn more more about the Paley Center by visiting paleycenter.org. Thanks so much and take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye guys.